We just finished the pile class, which is kind of similar to the deck, except uh, the big advantage is it lets you add and remove individual cards. And we don't have to worry about the array not being able to change sizes because we're used an array list here. So now we're back into the chapter 13 main method. And here I duplicate, I called the other one old main because we're gonna do something very different here. And we can collapse all this other stuff down. So we're gonna make a new deck and we're gonna shuffle it. Now I've modified my deck, so I have a feeling, where's my new deck? This constructor builds a deck of 50, the full regular deck of 52 cards, has all the cards, it has them in order, which is what we want in this situation. We're gonna build a new deck. This is the full 52 card deck. Then we're gonna shuffle it, and then we're gonna split it. And here's how we're gonna do it. Now this code, let's go over what's happening here. We make a new pile. Now we just wrote that code and we saw that pile, the pile constructor, and there's a few ways to get to it. One of them is navigate, go to declaration, control B. And if you look, what does this constructor do? It doesn't do much, it just initializes the array list. And that's important because when we're about to add cards, so this dot cards needs to exist. And that's exactly what we did right here. We initialized it. So now we can call the add deck and this sub deck, now it goes zero to 25. Now I modified my sub deck. So my sub deck would actually need to use, I think this would need to be a 26 because mine is exclusive the way it should be. Uh, but there's a better way to do it than this. We can use deck dot length right here. Uh, and of course we wanna go over two and we're gonna use that same value right here. Two, why is it? Okay. And then here it's deck dot length. So we cut the deck in half here, zero to halfway. And then we went halfway to the end. And the reason I did this way, instead of hard coding in the numbers, well, my code, the numbers are slightly off, but the real reason I did it is because maybe you want to play with a 48 card deck. Maybe you're not working with a full deck. There's a few games that don't use a full deck. Maybe you threw in some jokers, which we haven't put into the card class, but maybe later you want to put some jokers in. So maybe your deck has 54 or 56 cards, or maybe you're cheating and you want a couple extra aces or something like that. By not hard coding the number in, I can change the deck without changing this code right here, which is definitely useful. You wanna minimize the number of actual uh, times you use constants like that. Okay, now we're gonna have a while loop that just runs for a long time. Uh-oh. What happened? All right, so we got some problems. I'm gonna highlight all, Alt-Shift-F. That's formatting. We're missing one closed bracket. Hopefully that fixes everything. It looks like that's what was missing, okay. So let's go over this code we just put in. This is while the two piles are not empty, and this has the and in between, so both of them have to be not empty. You pop a card from each pile, card one, card two. Uh, again, I'd recommend calling this one C0 and P0 and C1 and P1, but we'll just go with the way it's written. Well, actually, no, let's change it. There's a fast way to do it. All right, highlight the variable you wanna change, control R. So I'm gonna call this P0, enter, and notice it that's called refactoring. It changed P0 everywhere else. We're gonna do the same thing for P2, control R. I'm gonna call it P1, enter. And that refactored everything down here. We're gonna do the same thing, control R, C0, enter, control R, C1, enter. All right, now, 
everything looks good to me. Okay, so what are we doing? We're gonna get two cards. We're gonna compute the difference. So we're gonna get the ranks and subtract them. If the difference is greater than zero, then you're going to add both cards to the zero pile. If the difference is less than zero, you add both cards to the first pile. Now, what do you do in a case of a tie? Uh, I think, oh man, I'm gonna have to look up the rules for war. It's high, each player draws four. Okay, each player draws four more cards. So we're gonna have to do, we're gonna have to implement this. Uh, after the while loop ends, we're gonna display the winner. So it's basically who ran out of cards loses. And I wanna be outside the while loop. So the while loop ends here. And if that's hard to see, because it's a really long method that's too long to fit on the screen, look at the highlighting. The yellow highlights the uh, open curly brace, and that's the closed curly brace. So this would be after the while loop, we're gonna have this. Uh, Alt Shift F. Uh, if P Z P one is empty, then player zero wins. Else player one wins. Okay. So if one is has no cards, then zero wins. If the other is happening, then player one wins. All right. So let's deal with the tie. All right. How do we do that? Uh, this is actually going to be a little bit tricky. If the two cards are the same rank, it's a tie. Each player draws four more cards. Whoever has the highest fourth card takes all the cards in play. Oh my goodness. We're going to have to keep track of a lot of cards here. All right. There's a few ways to do it. Each player draws four more cards. So, how can we do this? We can use an extra pile. I'm going to call it temp because it's only going to exist for a brief period. New pile. Okay. So, we have C0 and C1 already. Those are two cards. We can add those in. Temp dot add card C0. And we're going to do the same thing with C1. So we added these to the temp right there. Okay. Then each player draws four more cards, and then we're going to compare the fourth card. Okay. So how are we going to do this? We got to do uh, something three times or four times in a row. So let's do a four, a four loop to run three times. Int i equals zero, i less than three, plus plus i. So this will run three times. So I basically want to do this, except I instead of using the cards I already have, I want to go Play, player zero dot pop card and this will be player one dot pop card so I'm going to pop three cards from each player add them to temp then what we need to do is basically compare the cards again so we have a slight problem because we pretty much need to run all this logic a second time. And I, what I don't want to do is basically repeat all this pop card. We're going to need to compare again and basically run in pretty much this code. But then we run into another problem. We have to do it again. And not only that, somebody may run out of cards. And what do we do when somebody runs out of cards? In that case, they lose. Uh, so when you run out of cards, you lose. So this logic is going to get a little bit more tricky. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that in the next video.